All right, team, today is Tuesday, August 27th. And uh, from a practical, this is our lunch and learn, of course. And um, from a practicality standpoint, friendly reminder, two days left in the month, today and tomorrow. <laughs> So that's it, which means that for anything you've been working on for the month, which would include um, what level of rich rewards you're up to, um, things like that, your, of course, paycheck, whatever, that ends tomorrow. So if you are almost at 2,500, make sure you cross that 2,500 finish line so that you earn this month's um, ensemble of the month. If you are almost to 4,000, cross that finish line so that you get that $300 shopping spree. I mean, that's a big one, the 4,000 level. If you sign one person, they qualified, and you still have a second person to qualify, help them finish. That's another $300, Rich Rewards Level 5. There's just so many levels, even for the catalogs. Like if you are at $1,300, $1,400, it's crazy to not make sure you hit that $1,500. I mean, we're early in the season, and if you need catalogs, get them, buy one, get one free. When you pay for 20 40 show up at your house. Even if you did 50 and got 100 this catalog doesn't expire until February. So there's no point living on the edge early in the season with, oh, I'll see if I can make it. Why? Get enough and have enough so that you're set through February. Take advantage of getting them while you're on buy one, get one free. So whatever level you're tracking, tomorrow is it, tomorrow at midnight. Now, you have also, um, we are working on finishing up anniversary weeks. So whatever um, level you're working on for that, the level one doing 500 each week, the level two doing 1,000 each week, which gets you earrings and a bracelet. Um, if you have a recruit that you're launching and qualifying, you get a ring. Um, leaders, are you tracking your team number where you're getting the necklace? All of that is ending tomorrow. Um, if you did your thousand in the last two weeks of July, that means that you have two days left for double trip points. Double on what you're selling, double on what your trip recruits are selling. So you want to close up what you have because an $800 show closed today gets you 1,600 points. An $800 show closed on Thursday gets you 800 points. So crazy to keep anything open just for the sake of keeping it open. You want to get all of the double points while you can get them. And for those of you that have been tracking your boss up and taking advantage of getting promoted while also using the last two weeks of July as part of your volume and part of um, active branches as they may be required. That ends tomorrow as well. So we're looking good for Jessica Christian, looking good for Donna Russo. Um, Laura, not that it was part of Boss Up, but Laura Lee, who's on the call here, she just promoted to Branch. So that's super exciting. Um, we have Candace Kerr just had a bunch of recruits come on. So I have to check in and see if they're launching this month or next month or what, because she's edging up on area leader as well. So just a lot of excitement going on all over. So, oh, a lot of people just joined on. Okay, great. So today um, I wanted to focus on the gift that is recruiting. And um, there's so many aspects to team building that I did just want to make sure that we touch base on this today because really recruiting is an attitude and as soon as your attitude is right about it, it seems like recruits just come out of nowhere. Um, I was talking to Donna just the other day and she's like, it's, she's like, she said, I'm, I'm, I'm so tired and I have no voice. So I was cracking up because we know she's a talker as it is. And she's had so many recruiting interviews. And she's like, I put one off to tomorrow because I can't talk anymore. And I said, and it's also 1130 at night. So yes, we're done for the day. Tomorrow's a new day. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but once you just decide you're sharing the business, you're excited about it, people are naturally attracted to that excitement. 
And it's not so much about what you know, but just more about what you love and what you have to give. That's why even when you're brand new, like Kat was talking about before I started the recording, like at her launch, somebody joined with her. And it's not about what she knows, it's about what she's loving and experiencing and willing to share. So if you're brand new to the business, which a lot of you are, Please don't think, oh, I'll learn the business first, then I'll share it. Nope, that's what your recruiter's here to help you with. That's what your upline's here to help you with. And you have to know hardly anything. You just have to know where to, what direction to point them in. You have to know your leader's phone number. That's what you need to know so that your leader can handle it from there. There's no need for anyone to struggle as a new person with recruiting or anything else for that matter. So um, there's three parts to this recruiting is an attitude that we're going to look at today. One is the basic rules of recruiting. And as long as you follow the three basic rules, you're never going to have any trouble and you will be successful at recruiting. Part two is the why of recruiting, which is just why would you want to recruit? And then the three is, of course, the how to recruit. But if you're doing the first two, then the how to is actually quite simple. So depending on how long you've been in the business, you may have heard about the how to recruit, actually, like a million times before. So if that's the case, then why isn't everyone doing it, right? So um, that just only means that the why of the recruiting just isn't strong enough. It's as simple as that. Because if you're not sure why you should recruiting, it doesn't matter how much we tell you how to do it. <laughs> if you don't know why you want to do it, then why would you want to engage in any of the how? So here's the problem, so to speak. The how to recruit is attached to your brain, right? That's more of like a training issue, right? So it goes in, we hear it, we understand it, but yet we don't actually do it. And why is that? Because the why of recruiting is not attached to your head, it's attached to your heart. So your heart has to be open to why to recruit in order for the how to to actually take place. So we're not going to be focused on you. And some of you have trouble focusing on you, but some of you only are focused on you. So it's kind of like two different ways that this can unfold. Um, it definitely cannot be about what you're going to get, right? And that is so easy to actually get caught up in. You know, I'm going to get a promotion as soon as I get one more right? I'm going to get, as soon as I get one more, I'm going to get my trip. And when people talk like this, they never get the promotion and they never get the trip because that's just not really how it works. Or if I get one more, then I can get my level five RRC or my level six RRC. If I get one more, I'm going to get more jewelry. And all of that is about you. And at the heart, the, the, the reason why that also doesn't work if you aren't like that, because the other, the flip side of it is you're, you know, because at the heart of a woman, you know, we aren't really generally about getting. So we don't want to do things at the expense of someone else, right? We don't want people to think, oh, I'm getting a promotion on her back. I'm getting to go on a trip on the backs of my friends, my family, my people that join my team. Um, I don't want people to think that I'm making money off them. That you'll you'll hear that language even when you do the Q and A game at your shows, right? So, do you make money off your team? People say that all the time. Do you make money off the people that are under you? And I say, well, um, I am paid an override by Park Lane as thanks for training them. So, I am paid by Park Lane for helping people get started and for training my team. I'm definitely not making money off them. They are paid from Park Lane as well. And when you word it like that, people are like, oh, <laughs> because paid, making money off them makes it sound like 
somehow your pay is coming out of their check. And that's totally not the case. And man, did I just realize my accent is front and center during this little particular part of this training. <laughs> making money off them okay so that is one of those words that I definitely have I don't change much when I talk okay so um you know so when you get so caught up in this whole like I don't want people to think that then you almost take it as far as you know so if anyone comes up to me like of course I'll let them sign up but I'm not really gonna ask anybody I don't want to be pushy um, but here's the thing, recruiting is all about what we have to give. So if you're not giving it, if you're not giving the information, if you're not sharing, if you're not inviting, no one is going to come up to you and ask because you haven't shared anything about why they would want to. So we don't know what people need. We don't know what people's um, stage in life is, what their financial needs are. Um, you know, Susie Orman, she's one of those, um, like a financial expert, the blonde, short hair lady. She gets 10,000 hits a week on her website where people are saying, I need $600. 600 to $1,000 a month is like the main number that Susie Orman gets um, requests about. How can I get that $600? And um, even CNN has reported many times that $600 is the number that, mo that would change the life of many American households. You know, it's not like people are drowning by $4,000 a month, which, listen, could we all use $4,000 a month? Hell yeah. But $400, uh, $600 a month is like that magic number. It's the difference between making all the bills and still having that $600 on a credit card that gets worse each and every month. So that seems to be the number that would really change people. And the fact of the matter is, is that we do have the answer to that. We do have solutions to that. But we, sometimes we're getting so focused on ourselves and what we can get here at Park Lane, the jewelry, the trips, the promotion, that we're forgetting what other people are going through. So sharing the business is actually one of the biggest um, privileges that we have here at Park Lane. So when that's in our heart and when we truly um, understand that and believe it, that's when it becomes life changing for us because we can now help change the lives of so many other people. When you're in it, not for yourself, but for the other person. Um, I always think about when I first met Jennifer Ewart and at convention, you know, the girl above her who's no longer in Park Lane, um, nor is the person above her actually, but Jennifer came her first time. She was a fashion director. She was selling a lot and had never recruited. But then when she came to convention, you know, here it was. She's seeing people sharing the business. Jen, I shouldn't even really speak for you when you're sitting right here. What was it about? when you came to convention that kind of made it like, Hey, I could, I should really should start sharing the business. Cause it was an unbelievable the turnaround after that. Yeah. I think I just got a big picture of what, what was actually possible and that those that shared at convention, um, were so many of them were in the same spot that I was, uh, as a mom and, um, really saw that, okay, this, like I can make, something for not only for my family, but I can help others in changing their lives as well. And, um, and it was, it was easier to share when you have that passion of, oh my gosh, like this is changing my life. Like I am loving being a part of something bigger than, than just me. And I can share that with others and help them change their lives also. Now that was a winter convention, right? So that was a February. Correct. And you promoted to branch in March? No, in February, right okay, after. So in February. And then area in March? Correct. It was back to back. That I definitely correct. remember. Yes, correct. <laughs> so she went from the same month went to branch, the very next month went to area. 
And then at that summer convention, was it that very summer that you were Nancy's sidekick? Yes. Right. Okay. So she was no, or was it the next one after? I don't no, know. One, no, one, one, after yeah. that, she was picked to be like Nancy Summers, our main trainer, sidekick at convention because of she was building so fast and doing so well. And then she promoted to division right after that. So this is somebody that, you know, as soon as she understood, hey, look, this is working really well for me look at what it's doing for other people, I should be sharing this. And the minute that she flipped that switch, she went up four levels <laughs> from having come to direct sales with zero experience. So I think that is just incredible and something that really everyone can be doing as long as you decide that this is something that you're going to do. So, um, it's just an, an amazing business. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take you through the rules and the why, and then really the how is quite simple. So I know that we, could, we do have a lot of brand new people that have joined the team. I mean, I myself, I joined just to make um, a Cobra. I was a stay-at-home mom for the six months at that point. I wasn't really a stay-at-home mom. I was a teacher on maternity leave. So I took the longest maternity leave I could get, but we were paying the Cobra come the six-month mark. So I needed $600, which I always why when I read the stats about the $600, I'm like, God, that is so accurate. That is exactly what we needed too. $600 was the cost of the Cobra. So um, I figured if I did three parties a month, averaging that I would make about two hundred dollars, then I would pay the I'd be able to pay the Cobra. So I did three shows. I made six hundred dollars, and my husband and I were pretty amazed. Um, and then we realized, you know, that means that I could decide to make a thousand dollars. I could decide to make fifteen hundred dollars, not just by doing more shows, but also by building a team. So. Um, the fast forward version of this is that was 19 years ago. I never went back to teaching. The six month old is now a junior in college. My middle guy that I was pregnant with when I started direct sales and didn't know for the next three months just became a freshman in college. And then I have a 10th grader here still at home. So it really is amazing what you can build as you share the business with others. And then as a leader, teach other people how to share the business with others. So um, 19 years in, here we are. So, um, you know, people will start for so many different kinds of reasons. I always crack up. There's, um, for, again, some of you know who this is and some of you are new to the industry, but Belinda um, Ellsworth is one of the most well-known trainers in direct sales. And her getting started story in direct sales was that at the time she, it, she was 19 years old and she was a drummer in a band, which always cracks me up because she looks about the last person on earth that would be the drummer in any kind of a band. But any Anyway, she was a drummer in a band and the band was doing pretty well but to pacify her mom she also worked like three mornings a week in a doctor's office as a receptionist and you know she would work she would be doing gigs late at night getting home at two o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning and then on these other mornings have to get up and go to work in the doctor's office well, this one patient, and not a friend, like a patient came in and was like, I'm trying out this new um, business. She was selling crystal and said, um, you seem really bubbly and fun. Would you have, am I supposed to start with five parties? Would you have one of them? And she was like, okay. <laughs> She's like, okay, you're supposed to have five orders before I get there. So she said, okay. So she gets five orders and invited all of her mom's friends because what 19 year old has a bunch of friends that need crystal, right? So she invites her mom's friends to this crystal party, has the five orders ahead of time, had an amazing show, people were booking and the girl said to her, man, you should, you're way better at this than me. You should just do this. And she did. She joined because she figured if she did that, she wouldn't have to get up early and work at the doctor's office anymore. She could do parties on the nights they never did gigs, which was Mondays and Tuesdays. And that's what she did for years, crystal parties on Mondays and Tuesdays so she didn't have to get up early after a gig. Can you imagine? 
And then it turned out, you know, she had a long, illustrious career in direct sales. Then she did end up quitting because the band became like huge. But then when she got married and had a baby, band not so good anymore. She went back to direct sales. So amazing how it can come in and out of your life. You can change products. Some of you have already changed products. Um, Park Lane, because of that direct to point that we have, leaders from other companies come here, which is what I did. I used to sell cooking tools and switch to jewelry. Um, we have people on our team that used to sell. Our upline was the number one person that sold um, in Party Light. So she was the number one seller and income earner at Party Light, and she came to Park Lane. So you'll find that the leader team here has experience from other companies, and then like Jennifer and others, people who started as a fashion director and came all the way up in this, in this company, which really is amazing. Um, but it's just also further proof that this business and Park Lane specifically really can be for anyone who wants to any kind of a change to start something new, to give it a try. Um, so we can't put our assumptions and our dreams on someone else. We don't know who's in the band. We don't know who hates getting up early. We don't know who's sending their kids to daycare every morning. Um, because we can fulfill virtually any dream that someone has. We just need to listen to what it is and then work with them to help achieve that dream. So with that, let's talk about the basic rules of recruiting. Rule number one, always invite people to join you. Always invite people to join you. Now the key word there is not necessarily always. The key word there is invite. So what I'm saying is we're not asking everyone. That's a little rough, the language, right? You'll hear people say that, ask everyone. But you know, ask everyone kind of can sound like, so do you wanna try the business? And people are like, no, I really just wanted to buy this necklace. Like that's a little much for people, um, unless they came in kind of already knowing they wanted to join and there's not that many of those. Um, we wanna use that softer language. Things like, I would invite you to take a look at what Park Lane has to offer, right? Isn't that a much softer, more pleasant way to get someone to consider it, to have someone consider it? I'd invite you to take a look at our business and see how perhaps it could fit into your life. That's something that people hear and are willing to do. And you know, consider how it would fit into your life. I'd invite you ladies tonight to take a look at what Park Lane has to offer. I'd encourage you to take home one of the brochures that I put into your clipboard, and we can always talk about it later. So when you're inviting like that, you're inviting everyone. There's no exclusions. There's no, um, you know, you're good enough, but you're not. It's just, I'm inviting you each to consider if you would like to see if this is something that might work for you. Um, so many of us are at shows, you know, worried about what people are thinking of us, right? I'm not going to invite them or to join my team. They probably don't, they probably know that I'm new. They don't know. They probably can tell I don't know what I'm doing. But really, people that are interested are worried more about what you think of them. They think you're the expert. <laughs> they think you're the one that knows what you're doing. So be that person. You do know what you're doing. If you're in front of them, you know more than them. <laughs> it may not be by much, but that's okay. You know how to get, you know you got started, you've done a launch party, and that's two steps ahead of them. So be, be confident in what you know, and if nothing else, be confident in what you love. And if what you love is this, then you know enough to get start to get someone else started. Um, so you know, rather than worry about what they, they don't think you're good enough, I promise you they're thinking, wow, I could never be as good as her. And if you're thinking to yourself, no one's thinking that, they are, I promise you they are, because you have some skills that they don't have yet, and we can definitely teach them. Okay, rule number two is to never prejudge people. We don't know who needs the money. 
And we certainly can't decide who does and who doesn't based on what you see in that home. Because some people need the money because they literally are coming up a little short on the bills each month. But some people need the money because their daughter wants riding lessons. And honestly, that why is perhaps just as strong for each person. Somebody that is short on bills, their why is strong. But if their daughter has always loved horses and this is something that, you know, is good for her self-esteem and she loves being around the animals and she's a different person when she's able to do it, but it's expensive no matter what it is, no matter where they live, that why is just as strong as somebody that needs the money for actual day-to-day -day expenses. Um, you can't judge someone's glamour level. One of my best team members for a long time was wearing a sweatshirt the first time I wore her, I met her at a show. And that is like my little tiny secret pet peeve because I do find it so hard to help people, you know, like to have people model when they come in a sweatshirt. And, um, I do try to even tell my hostesses to, you know, tell people to wear a plain top that they can have fun trying jewelry on with. But when I forget, or when they forget, or when people don't listen and they show up in a sweatshirt, I just always have a hard time with that. But um, that doesn't mean that they don't love jewelry. It doesn't mean that that might be the first time she wore a sweatshirt in a while, and there might be a very nice blouse under the sweatshirt. You know, who knows? So you just can't decide that because of this or that, this person's not interested or whatever, because they very, very well might be. Um, I mean, the number one reason that people do join for sure is money. There's no, there's no debating that. People join for money for sure. But there are many other reasons why people join. Um, I heard a great story one time about the, the doctor's wife that joined because she was so tired of being Dr. You know, Franco's wife. She wanted to have her first name back, which is what lots of moms join for too. Um, Kat actually emailed me this morning and was telling me how, you know, she's been a stay-at-home mom for years now. She always had been focused on her career and she's so excited to get back into it. Isn't that so true of so many of us where we were home for a while and then you went to a thousand mommy and me classes, this one, even at the pediatrician, they're like, okay, mom, so when you go home, like they don't even call you a name at the doctor's office with the kids. They call you mom, like you're their mom, which always kind of annoyed me. Um, I'm like, my name is right on the chart. At least call me Mrs. Zito if you don't know. Like I find it annoying when they, when doctors call you mom. But anyway, uh, they don't do that on Grey's Anatomy. I don't know why they do it in real life. So anyway, um, nice to be Michelle after all of those years, right? Um, there are people that have super demanding jobs that will do this because this job, no one dies. That's why, like, we have a lot of nurses, and I always joke with nurses. I'm like, you know how, like, at your regular job, if you make a mistake, somebody could get really sick or die? No one's ever died because they put on a necklace they didn't like. No one, ever. No one's ever died because you ordered the wrong size ring or the wrong color bracelet. These are not mistakes. There's no jewelry emergencies, ever, ever. There's no jewelry emergencies. So there are people who join just to have that outlet or they work in a very male dominated field and this is their time to be a girl and be around girls. So this is, um, you know, there's just so many things out there. So we just can't afford to prejudge. We invite all and then everybody can give it a try. Okay, rule number three is that at a party, we always do the recruiting talk no matter what? And this is a very common thing that goes on. You feel like the show maybe is getting a little long, people are getting a little antsy, and people are starting to look around. There's the sourpuss in the front, right, with her arms like this. There's this one. She might even be like this. Right? And you're like, oh my gosh, I got to finish this up. I don't have time to do the recruiting talk. I'm just going to get right to the end and just wrap it up and let people take orders. Okay? No way. I see Tamika shaking her head. Because when we do that, we're leaving out the most important person in the room in favor of a sourpuss. 
okay? Because here's the thing, most women have been to home shows. They know perfectly well at some point the lady's gonna do her spiel about why you should join the business. If you don't do it, it's kind of weird. Actually, if you don't do it, they start wondering what's wrong with them that you didn't share any business information with them. They're like, I guess she didn't like us. I guess we weren't pretty enough. I guess we weren't fashionable enough. That's extra um, touchy when you're selling a product like this, you know, where people will start to think, you know, was I not pretty enough? Was I not fashionable enough? Was I not, you know, we can't, we cannot have that. Because everyone is pretty and smart and fashionable enough to try this. We can help people look um, the more the part, and not everybody has to be a glamour queen. There's very, people who are much plainer doing this, and there's people super glam doing this, and everywhere in between, and there's a, there's a way for everybody to feel comfortable doing it. So we, we always do the recruiting talk, because here's the thing. When we don't, we've decided for everyone in that room, they don't get the solution we have. They don't get to find that $600 solution that they may desperately be needing. And here's the thing, really that recruiting spiel, it's maybe a minute and a half. It's maybe a couple of questions in your Q&A at the end. And when you leave it out, think of who now is not, think of, think of what you're taking away from someone, right? There's probably a woman in that room, right? Think about, there's a lady in that room that was at work all day, came home, and their kid came home from school with the flyer about the baseball clinic, right? And they're like, mommy, can I do the baseball clinic? Um, Frankie's doing it, and Anthony's doing it, and Matthew's doing it, and all my friends are doing it, can I do it? And you, they, she glanced at that form and it's $300, because that's what kids stuff freaking costs. All these little clinics and whatnot they wanna do, everything's $200, $300, depending on how long it is. It's every Saturday for six weeks and it's $400 because they're bringing in the blah, blah, blah hitting coach and, or to do it, they're going to need a better bat and this and that, right? And she's like, oh, okay, sweetie, I'll, you know, we'll see or let me talk to daddy and whatever. And really she was like, oh my gosh, I, we don't have $300 for this. And if he doesn't do it, he's never going to make the travel team and da, 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 da. And now she's swirling, right? And she comes to the show and what she could have heard is... I could do a launch party for you and you're likely to get a $300 paycheck right at your first show. Bam, there's her admission. <laughs> there's her cost for the camp or the clinic or whatever. And we didn't do the recruiting talk because of Susie Sourpuss that was sitting here, who frankly forgot your name when she drove away, never mind did she go home saying, I can't believe she wasted two minutes of my night talking about the business. She doesn't say that. She doesn't even honestly remember your name half the time. Did you ever have that where you feel like you know everybody in the room and when you're doing the orders, they're like, what's your name again? I'm like, oh my God, we just, I just did a whole show for you. I said your name 67 times and you just had to ask me my name to write the check. Got it. So she's definitely not mad driving away that you, um, you took the time to share the business for a couple of minutes. So um, we can't leave the recruiting talk out. If you find that it's a consistent problem for you that you're reaching the end of the show and that's consistently happening, then all that means is your show is too long and that you're gonna take out one cluster of jewelry, because probably you show a set, a set, a set, a set, and then you do the end, right? Or, you know, you just kind of have a, a you, you just have to cut one grouping out, because it's way more important to do your recruiting talk than it is to show another cluster of jewelry, another grouping of jewelry, that they can see with their eyes the minute the show is over. And they may have even seen already. So it's totally okay to cut that down a couple of pieces in favor of having enough time for that. So um, you really have the power to change the trajectory of an entire household if you take the time to do it, as opposed to accommodating the one who doesn't want to hear. So decide now who you're more concerned with. I hope you'll decide that you're concerned with here, you know, sharing with the people that need it. Okay, that is, that was rule number three. Rule number four is we are not looking for recruits. 
We are looking for leads, okay? You're not looking for a recruit. You are simply looking for leads, which means that, you know, we're just generating interest. So don't waste time looking for a recruit. And not only that, not only do we waste time looking for recruits, but we're looking for the one, right? Where you're like, I'm gonna find the perfect one. I'm gonna find me. News flash, you're not finding you, okay? Especially if you're extra awesome, okay? You're not finding you, okay? You just wanna find people that are interested in hearing more. And isn't that a lot less pressure for you? Isn't that a lot easier to just find somebody willing to take home a brochure and agree to talk to you about it tomorrow than to go find you? Because not happening, okay? So I'm just gonna let you know now and save you all that time. We just wanna create interest because the more interest you create, the more leads you're gonna find. The more leads you find, the more people that you will sign in the end. So the goal really is to send home three brochures at each show. Now, the brochure I'm referring to, must have used it on that one. I keep these in my clipboards for the show. So every guest gets this clipboard. Notice it's a teeny tiny clipboard the same size as a wish list. So the wish list is on top, the referral form is next, and then the style your success. That's what I'm referring to. Underneath that is the hostess brochure. That way when they do their order, if they want to take it home, I just pull it out. I don't have to go looking somewhere else. So I just am sending them home with this style your success, and it's just a super brief overview of the business. These are super cheap on the supply order form, and um, it just gives a little overview on the business itself, an overview on what your weekly paycheck would look like selling various amounts, how the sale works, and a blurb on our um, uh, Mercedes program. So that when you do have your follow-up conversation, you're able to just say, okay, so when you looked at the brochure, what jumped out to you? If they say the sale jumped out to them, you talk about how the sale generates excellent sales, which is high paychecks at every show. If they say, oh my gosh, tell me about the Mercedes, you get to say how at the first level of leadership, you get on track to earn a paid for Mercedes. Most companies, you have to be an executive level to get a Mercedes. So anyway, that's a separate training altogether, but getting these out in the hands of people. When I say send them home with information, this is all I mean, just one of these, okay? So if you're doing two shows a week and sending three of those home with each person, that's 24 little brochures going home with people. With the one in 10, uh, rule of that every 10, you know, questions you ask, one will be a yes. That would be two and a half recruits a month. <laughs> so how great is that? If you were to do one show a week with that ratio, you'd have one new team member a month. And I don't think there's anyone that wouldn't be excited with having a consistent new team member every single month. Uh, okay, so there are three steps to this, right? Number one order brochures or print the brochures off of the field interface. You can do that as well in the downloads. Second step is to have brochures with you when you're out and about and when you do your parties. I, that's why, again, I like to just do it in the clipboard because if I have my clipboards, then I know I have my brochures. So go to the show prepared to share the information. The more that you give out, the more that you give out, meaning, I know that sounds weird, but once you get on the roll of handing one out, like when you're doing your checkout, it's like, okay, well, would you like to take a brochure home? We can certainly talk about it tomorrow. I know it's crazy right now. What would be a good time? And then they'll say, oh, I'll be home tomorrow night. Okay, great. Somebody's always listening, right? And they're like, oh, she didn't get crazy about the, because people have seen at other home parties, right, where she's like, 
they, they witnessed a friend indicate, or maybe they themselves indicated they were might have been interested in the business, and then the girl starts vomiting information all over them immediately. Oh my God, it's so amazing. You have to do it. It's so great. You know, we're going to book a party, and then you can join right away, and then we're going to go to convention. We're going to sleep together. It's going to be amazing. We can go on vacations. Our kids are going to be best friends. It's going to be the greatest thing you ever did. And now the girl's like, oh my God, why did I say I was interested? And the girl behind her is like, well, I'm not saying anything. She just got word vomited and somehow she's sleeping with a lady in Chicago. I'm out. No way. So when they see that you behave normally and act like it's not the first time you did it and you're like, okay, great. Take this brochure home. It's just a little overview. What would be a good time that we could talk tomorrow? She's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I'm going to ask one too. So you'll see that the more you give out, the more you give out. Um, and they'll also start referring their friends. Okay, so um, I'm trying to decide. Okay, I think we can do twelve forty-seven. I think we'll, we'll 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 break at this point. And does anyone have a question or a comment on anything that we talked about to this point? Feel free to unmute yourself. Is there something that you, is there an action step that you're prepared to take based on what you just heard? Is there something you know you have to do? Is there something that you know you have to start doing or is there something you know you have to stop doing as a result of what you heard here? Kat, are you trying to unmute yourself? Yes, I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry, I was gonna do it for you if you couldn't find it. It was, um, it was actually, I took a lot of notes and it was an amazing, uh, learning experience for me, um, as in, as in the train for training. Um, I definitely, uh, um, I might have with the, with the one, my one recruit, you know, my one friend, maybe I did text her a little too much now that you say that. And that's why I backed off of her. If it's time for her to come on, she's come, she'll come on. Um, I love the fact about the clipboards because I was looking uh, looking for um, a way to be organized. So I'm going to look into getting those and the brochures. So that whole packet thing. Um, my part, my show, um, my launch was uh, was a little different because my my friends all like jumped at the jewelry, wanted to just talk to everybody. It was just a big big. Um, it was a big big girls brunch, and we all just hung and talked. And everybody just wanted to Nothing order, wrong with that. and they were trying on, and this and that, and going back and forth. So, I mean, everyone had a great time. We actually didn't even have to, there weren't a, um, any of the games or anything like that, because no one was, it was just almost just like fun and business right away. So, I didn't really get to see that whole aspect. I remember, of course, from going to other parties, but I love how you flipped it on how it's going to be me now, and uh, learning from that. So, I'll have, I'm definitely going to order those brochures and be as organized because I need a, <laughs> that's one of my, 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 um, at least, uh, strengths. Yeah. You and me both. Um, <laughs> these are my newest version of them and see how there's a pen holder. At oh them? yeah. So we ordered these on Amazon Okay. and, um, honestly, they were so cheap. They're not as pretty as the plastic ones I used to have. Um, they're just like the brown kind. However, they are sturdier. Sometimes those plastic ones would break. Um, whereas these don't break, but I don't even care it. I love that it has the pen holder. So when I hand it out and at the end of the night, I walk around and stick my pens back in and I find I lose less pens this way. That's awesome. Very, very so cool. Check it out on Amazon. We definitely cool. ordered them from there. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions? All right. Well, I would challenge you this week to Number one, think about, is there somebody that you haven't shared with, or is there someone that was at a show recently that you should have followed up with? If that's the case, then I would say use this week to do any follow-ups for people that you've met or just people that you would love to work with. Look through for those customers that spent a lot of money or somebody that you remembered being particularly bubbly or fun or fashionable. And just say, you know what? 
I know this may sound out of the blue, but I actually could not stop thinking about you since I met you at Susan's house. You were so much fun. You seem to know a lot about fashion and jewelry. Um, have you ever thought about doing something like I do? And let them answer and take it from there. Because um, if they say, and you know, I hope that you'll take this as a compliment because it's certainly meant as one. That is one of um, Mary Grace's most famous um, things that she says when she's talking to people because it is a compliment, you know, we, and we want them to know that it is a compliment because we don't um, necessarily make the extra step to follow up with every single person. We ask every single person up front and invite every single person up front, but only the super special ones we follow up with again <laughs> that are more memorable. All right, we, next week we will continue with the why of recruiting and the five benefits of Park Lane. And that's what we will um, do on next week's Lunch and Learn. So I'll look forward to seeing you all then. Um, tonight I'm gonna do a welcome orientation Zoom for everybody that's new, appropriate for if your launch is upcoming or even if you already did your launch because it's all about getting additional shows booked, the Rich Rewards program, kind of a lot of things you need to know in getting started. So leaders, if you could remind your new people, um, anyone who joined, honestly, any point this summer um, would be appropriate for them. Anybody who joined really June or July. And it's at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. And like all, um, like all calls, it will be um, recorded and posted to YouTube. But when you're on live, then you get to ask questions. So thanks, everybody. Have a great month end. And um, locals, I'll see tons of you tomorrow night. Bye.